Could you be slowing down your own internet speed without realizing it? I am gonna show you how you can check and what you can do about it. Firstly, and to be clear, you are not gonna get faster internet speed than you're paying for. If you pay for 500 megabits per second from your internet service provider, nothing is gonna get you one gig. Now you have two ways to connect to your router. You can either use an ethernet cable such as this one, or you can go wireless and use the Wi-Fi. In reality, we are gonna use both. I mean, it's not like anyone in their right mind is gonna walk around their home with a wire attached to their phone. But there are two problems here. The first is that most people don't know what network adapters they have for both Wi-Fi and wired. This is where so many problems happen and where speed is lost. I'm gonna show you how to check yours shortly. The second problem is that so many routers these days focus on wireless and the wired connections have kind of taken a back seat. Often routers have limited number of LAN ports with very little tech to manage that glorious data speed that you get with a wired connection. So I reached out to my friends at ASUS and asked them to send me the best router that they have that is less than $400 still has Wi-Fi 7, but must have a massive focus on wired connectivity. Let me show you what they sent me. This is the RTBE88U, and yes, this is less than $400, and there are some insane features that you have to check out. All right, let's put it down for a second. Yes, this has Wi-Fi 7, making it future-proof. It provides 4096 QAM with a total networking speed of 7,200 megabits per second. That is 5,764 megabits on their 5 gigahertz band and 1,376 megabits per second on their 2.4 gigahertz band. Essentially, it is 1.2 times faster than Wi-Fi 6 dual band routers. Now, if somebody is streaming Netflix on a smart TV and your kids are playing online games where latency is a killer, all whilst you're trying to make a video conference call in your office, the system will automatically work out which device needs what bandwidth so nobody gets that buffering and that latency. This is possible because the router has something called MLO, multi-link operation, which allows devices to connect on multiple bands at the same time. The router aggregates the bandwidth, providing faster and more reliable connectivity for everyone concurrently. And here is where we have to look at what wireless connectivity you actually have in your phones and in your laptops. So in your Windows 10 environment, in your search, type network and click on network status. Then this little screen pops up. Under your Wi-Fi setting, click on properties and scroll all the way down and you're gonna see network band. This one is 2.4 gigahertz and you can see the speed is maxed out at 144 megabits per second on receiving and transmitting. Okay, that is pretty terrible speed. So let's connect to the five gigahertz band and see what that does. Right, let's fire up network status and underneath the Wi-Fi setting, same as before, now it's the five gigahertz band and look at that speed, 866 megabits per second, sending and receiving. Massive difference by choosing the right band. So when checking your router and your connectivity, always connect to the highest band that your router has. If your laptop or your computer only connects to the 2.4 gigahertz, it's 100% time to get yourself a new Wi-Fi adapter. Now, when it comes to your phones and to your tablets, you're probably gonna get at least five gigahertz. And if you've bought your phone recently, you could already be set up to hit the Wi-Fi 7 mark. So those are less of a concern than your desktop or your laptop, which you've had for years. Right, now that we know about wireless, the real magic happens when stuff is wired. The rule is that ideally, anything that needs fast and reliable speed should be wired. Definitely your main computer and things like your NAS or your gaming station where speed and reliability are just a must. Now this is where the RTBE88U shines as you get a total of 34 gigs with your WAN LAN capacity. Now, as we did with wireless, we first wanna check out our own network adapters and see what speed it is capable of. You are simply not gonna get more speed than your network adapter allows. 
So let's check your network adapter now. Right, back into the network status, we go under your Windows search, and this time we're gonna scroll all the way down and we can click on view hardware and connection properties. What we're looking for is this line, the link speed. In my particular case, it's 1000 megabits per second. Right, so as you saw on that particular computer, it was a one gig card, and even if I plug an ethernet into a five gig port, I'm only going to get one gig as that is my maximum speed. If I want to increase that speed, I would need to purchase something like a 10 gig network card. And that's exactly what I did on my main computer where I do all my editing. And this is where I really need the speed. Now my card is 10 gigs, which means I can really take advantage of the RTB88U. Let me show you the ports on this. I'm just gonna remove this back antenna, which is nice that it is actually, in fact, removable. Now you see this router has a dual 10 gig ports. We have a 10 gig WAN LAN port, and next to it, we have a 10 gig SFP plus port. Now having this particular port is a big deal because it gives you options. You can use that port to connect to your internet service provider's equipment, of course, to connect to your NAS if it has that port. You can use this to connect to your 10 gig switch. You can use this to connect to your workstation or your server as long as you got the right equipment. So it gives you great options for great speed, great reliability and great connectivity. Now watch this. Over here, there's another WAN LAN port. This one is 2.5 gig. So which one do you actually use for your service provider? In other words, the WAN. And which one do you actually use for your LAN? In other words, like for your computer. And here is where we get super smart. Since I'm only paying for a maximum of one gig internet, I'm not gonna waste that 10 gig port to my service provider. So I plug my service provider cable into that second WAN port, which is 2.5 gig. And I plug my computer directly into the 10 gig port to take full advantage of that speed. And the RTBE88U knows exactly how to allocate and deal with each port as it has something called AI detection. It will automatically configure the port all by itself to function correctly. So many people simply plug in their cables and since they technically work, they're okay with it, but they don't know that they could be getting so much more if they just understood which is the correct port to plug into and how fast or slow their network adapters are. But now, you know how to check yours. Now, speaking of ports, watch this. This is a USB port. Now you can use that USB port for various things like additional storage or connecting a printer to it. But the best thing that you can connect to that port is actually your cell phone or a data only cellular dongle. In the event that your service provider stops working for whatever reason, the system can switch over to the cellular data and you will continue to work until your main service provider is back up again. Now, as this obviously uses your data from your phone plan, just make sure you are on unlimited data. What I also love is how ASUS is thinking about future-proofing their devices. So besides Wi-Fi 7, you can also use this router as part of your AI mesh network for greater coverage in your home. There is also great emphasis on security, including AI Protection Pro that is powered by Trend Micro. This is a great system that keeps your entire network safe, constantly being updated, and it doesn't cost you any monthly subscription fees. That is a massive win. Because we update IPCs with our antivirus and all those definitions, but what about those smart devices? Have you any idea what's going on there? You don't. So this protects your entire network. Check out the link in the description for more information. Also check out how to set up those smart devices in your home in a way that is safe and doesn't compromise your entire network. Give the video a quick thumbs up before you head out and I will see you in this video. Let's go.